I hate doing that. Um, I would think about form techniques, so I would be making sure that the rib cage is stacked over the pelvic floor in various movements. I've shared a lot on rib flare and how it can be sneaky, especially with overhead stuff, and making sure you're breathing the ribs down, not um, smashing them down, because we're still, that is still going to create pressure. So I would think about form technique and positioning. Are you breathing into the diaphragm, which as a side note, you're always breathing into the diaphragm, but there can be more chest breathing versus actual 360 breathing. And if you are doing that, you should be getting the reflexive lengthening and that lift, um, especially at a lower scale weight. But I will say this, like weight aside, five or 10 pounds, what matters more is your coordination ability. And if you're struggling with that, sometimes it doesn't matter how much weight you need to really come. I'm kind of lukewarm on them. I'm not like someone to recommend it to anybody to get. Um, I. I, I think it's just because generally more people trend towards hypertonic and it's usually not what they need um, to isolate the pelvic floor just by lifting and relaxing. Um, I don't think that like they couldn't be part of a plan, but they definitely should not be only thing used. And I think far more than lifting Kegel weights with your pelvic floor, I would rather have you spending your time doing global strengthening and coordinating how all of those movements work together, because I think that is the most effective way of understanding why a lot of people have pelvic dysfunction is related to the inability to coordinate it with other movements or the surrounding weaknesses that are there rather than just this emphasis on strict pelvic floor strength. C-section scar mobilization is moving the scar to prevent or break up adhesions that lie below that scar. Now, when they do a C-section, they cut through so many layers of the abdominal wall. And if that scar isn't mobile, so just think about like any other part of your skin moving nice and freely, um, that can signal that there's adhesions below the level of the skin or even deeper in those tissues. And you can think about like dense spider webs, kind of. And that can inhibit the way things are functioning in multiple ways. The ability to contract muscles, um, tightness and pulling in certain areas because you've got that tightness like at a deeper level than you can try to figure out with stretching, um, bladder function, um, lots of stuff. It's actually, it's really interesting, but it should definitely be something that every woman who has a C-section is taught. No, I don't follow any sort of thing like that. Like, I've probably tried that a handful of times, and it just it didn't feel good for me. Um, so I eat all day long. I don't know, blood sugar this, that, the other thing. I don't know. I found what works for me. I eat probably five times a day. I have snacks. I try to aim for 20 grams of protein at least at every one of those intervals, um, and that's what I do. I think all this stuff is just, it's so individualized and it also depends on your level of discomfort and how much it's affecting your quality of life. So I was told by my OB that I have a hypermobile urethra and I would never do anything without leaking without a sling surgery, which I declined. And I chose movement, conservative treatment. Um, I used Uresta for a long time with running. I don't use it that much anymore, but I occasionally will when I feel like hormonal fluctuations, which I've touched done in the past that um, a lot of people recognize these changes that become cyclically with menstruation. Um, <clears throat> so needless to say, as someone who's experienced that one too, I, um, I, it's everything's individual. I just always remind you that like surgery is not a be all end all cure all because sometimes if we don't address some of the pressure control issues, um, there are failure rates with those that come along with it. I can't figure out how to link it, so it'll be the next one. Let's learn to 360 diaphragm breathe. Connecting anatomy to an image can be helpful, like this children's toy. As it expands, so should your rib cage, abdomen, and back expand in all directions on an inhale. On exhale, everything should gently... Start with breathing. The counterintuitive thing to a lot of it is that you create tension um, in response to 